Hi there, this is Michael Branson Smith. Um, I'm here to give you a quick introduction to using Visual Studio Code as your text editor for your web design or web development courses this semester. Uh, for a number of you, this should be a review. For those that it's brand new, uh, I hope you enjoy seeing what's possible with a powerful text editor like Visual Studio Code. Um, just Google Visual Studio Code, you'll find a, you'll be directed to a download either for a Mac, Windows, or even Linux if you're inclined. Um, once you download that editor, you will see something like this. This is the Visual Studio Code interface, the little welcome. No pages or files open by default. Um, what makes Visual Studio Code such a popular text editor is the fact that it's an open source text editor and there have been uh, innumerable extensions created that makes it very versatile for a lot of different types of projects, even for uh, simple pro projects like ours in the introductory level. There's going to be a lot of things that allow you to write code much more quickly than normally with um, something else. So we're going to look at, in this introduction, what's called the Explorer. Um, just point out the extensions, which we're not going to be using, and then this gear icon where there's the command palette and settings, which we're also going to look at very briefly. Um, in the next tutorial, I'm going to talk a lot about these extensions so you can configure Visual Studio Code to behave exactly how, and look exactly how you'd like. Um, so you'll notice that no files open by default and encourage you to start typing HTML or CSS or JavaScript. It actually is wanting you to define a folder, a folder for which you want to think about as your project folder, whether it's just tutorials, assignments, or some big grand app plan that you want to develop. So let's create a folder on the desktop so that we can then open it and see what happens. So on the desktop, we're going to create a new folder called Web Design 1. All right, and you can see it's also here in this finder window. And now that it's there, we can open that folder and we can select it and open it. All right, and you can see it reloads and shows that Web Design 1 is now the project folder that we're working from. And now we have the ability to start creating files and folders inside of this Web Design 1 folder and manage our project. So we're going to create our first folder, which we're going to use for this week, and we're going to call it 00week-basics of tools, right? And we're going to then make, um, we're going to note that it can either, whoops, we can uh, have it highlighted or by clicking on it, and you can see, or not highlighted. If it's highlighted, then you can click on a new file and it'll go inside that folder like test.html. We make our test.html and you can see that is now open and we can get rid of this welcome window which we no longer need. We can continue to have this folder highlighted and we can add also we're going to make a test.css and a test.js. All right. But if we get outside of the folder, right, and we make a new folder, we could say make a 01 week um, HTML basics, right? Okay, and you'll note that net, that is highlighted. And if we put files in there, they uh, made files, they would show up in this um, another .html, right? And we're actually gonna close that one and we're gonna right click and we're gonna delete that one too, all right? But if you go back to the finder now, you'll notice that we have Web Design 1, and inside there we have uh, the folders we've just created as well as the files that we've created. All right, so we get to work with the Finder and create files and folders within Visual Studio Code, and we could even make, say, an images folder. So if we wanted to point to a bunch of JPEGs and PNGs inside of here and be able to manage them as part of our, our, our project that we're going to upload later on uh, to the, your server. So with all these files created, let's start to see some of the power of what's possible with Visual Studio Code. So we're going to close the Explorer, and we have these three files open. Within the HTML, so with these files all having their appropriate extensions for CSS, JavaScript, and HTML, Emmet keyboard shortcuts, or all sorts of shortcuts, are available for you to write because it recognizes it. 
So if I type HTML in the HTML file, it's going to recommend an M and abbreviation. And if we collect, select HTML5, it's going to, and click on it, it's going to give what's called the boilerplate, where you see the declaration of the type of document, the HTML, the head, the body, and then the closing tags themselves. All right. Um, but you can even do this faster. You can just type exclamation point, and you don't have to click on it. You can instead just uh, click return. All right. So without even leaving the keyboard, you can say um, exclamation point return and then start tab into the document title and say test page. Right. And now I can open this in the browser and I'm using a live server, which I'm going to talk about in the extensions tutorial. And you can see there's nothing on the page yet, but you can see the tab has been named test page. And if I change it, I can say test page and more and save it, you can see test page and more is now up in the tab. So now that I have an HTML file, I can start to use dozens of different e, uh, Emmet keyboard shortcuts or Emmet shortcuts. Basically, you can type any tag name. So if I want to make an H1, I can type H1 and the Emmet abbreviation comes up again and you can click on it or just hit enter and you can say type test page inside of that tag and save it. Now you're going to actually see some content. So same thing goes with a P for a paragraph element. And you can see inside of there we have nothing, but I can use, uh, we want to generate a dummy text and we can use lorem ipsum. So we type lorem and that as well as an Emmet keyboard shortcut. And I can hit return and it generates a huge paragraph. All right. And so there's lots of these. These are for those that are just getting started. This is enough HTML and you can just stop here and just watch the rest and not necessarily have to keep up because you haven't even been introduced much to these elements and tags as they're also called. But for those that uh, do know what they're doing, um, it's good to have a little reminder. So let's see a couple more complicated ones. So we can work with an image element and select to have the source tag and we could find say a uh, puppy right and and embed this image and we're copying the image url and we're going to hot link it in here and we could call this make sure we fill up uh, the alt text so it's a puppy on a deck right and we save this and you can see we've quickly added a puppy right we can do things like um, have anchor links, right? So let's say we're going to have an anchor link. So we would type A, and now we have an anchor link so we can go somewhere. Let's say we're going to go to the Visual Studio Code site. So we could copy that, put it in our href attribute, and type in here Visual Studio Code site, right? And now we have that link right there, okay? So anchor links as well as um, the writing of divs and class names. So if you can remember, we could write a div, right? Oops, div. And this is just an empty uh, container. And we could add, you know, a copy of our paragraph in here, paste. And we save this and now we have, and you don't even notice the div, but those that have worked with them, you know that they're used a lot to organize HTML. So maybe we were working on a card system. So we could say div.card, right? And you can see it's now added. The dot card is made the class card. And so you can, if you remember, we could have, uh, and you don't even have to write div because it assumes uh, if you're just write a class, you want to create a div. So we could say dot card dash media, right? And it would create that div for a card media. You could create dot card dash text, right? And it would create that text, but let's say we wanted to make an H2, right? Element instead. So we'd say H2 dot card text, and we're gonna add a second class at the same time. So we're gonna, with this H2, we're gonna create two classes, card text dot card title, right? And you can see there's now an H2 with two classes, and this time let's actually write something. So this is the card title, right? And so 
you don't see that all in the HTML and it's really with CSS, this stuff starts to make a lot of sense, but you can remember how these Emmet keyboard shortcuts are really, really practical. And there is, you can Google Emmet cheat sheets and you'll find all sorts of additional ones. I'm gonna show you a couple more that are really practical. Uh, for example, if you wanted to make an unordered list and make a bunch of list elements, you can use this descending, you know, greater than sign and say UL and then say LI, say times five, and that's gonna make an unordered list with five ele list elements inside. And you can start typing in them and say like, first one, another one, oops. And then keep tabbing into the next list element and, and, and type in what list items you want to have. So um, more items, another, another, right? And we save that and you can see there's that classic bulleted unordered list. All right, so lots of HTML um, keyboard shortcuts with Emmet that are really, really practical. Um, another fun one uh, can be to want to place a cursor in more than one place. Let's say that we've made a couple of these cards. I'm gonna make another card and then you want to change card text and remove this and let's say there's like three of them so i the cursor here and i'm going to also put the cursor here we need to change this to card uh title big and you can see i was able to change two at once by using the option key and clicking and placing a second cursor and again that's a a mac keyboard shortcut and i'm sure there's a windows equivalent just hunt around when you're clicking. So it's, you click one and then hold down the option key or some key and click again for Windows. And you can see they're both there. Now I could delete, right? Card, maybe it's just card, okay? So these things help speed along your code as you're going. Uh, the last two I'm gonna show are classic ones. We're gonna actually add in the head the link for CSS and we're gonna immediately add that test.css file. And then also at the bottom, say for our script, let's say we're gonna do some DOM work. So we'd say script source, and we'd say test.js. And you can see it's even suggesting it, all right? And with those saved, now I'll just show you a very quick example of say we select the H1 and CSS, we can make the color and it's, it's recommending properties right here. And we could say, make it red and we save this and you can see the, the test page uh, um, H1 is now red, but we could also, if we wanna do the background color of this element, we could, instead of typing out the long background color or selecting it because it's background dash color, right? And you could finish all the way off or get there. But if you want, you can start typing back and then say color, and it's gonna suggest the only property that's available, background color. And then you could say light, cyan, right? And save it and you can see that has a background color. Hopefully you can see that. And if you want to see a color on the whole thing, what's for fun, just select the body element. And again, type the background color. All right, now I'm hitting enter after arrive if it's recommended, just like Emmet. It's like if it recommends something and you click enter, you don't have to click it with your mouse. You can just hit the enter key and we could say light gray and save it and you can see the whole page now has gray. So that's enough for this. And finally, one last thing. So when you write comments, so you, we're not gonna write any JavaScript, but you, a JavaScript comment syntax is, there is a JS comment format, right? And you know, if you ever remember the format for commenting in a language, because the comment format and JavaScript is different from CSS and also different from HTML. And the way you do that, it's like, um, you could type anything, I want to make this a comment, right? And then back in there and hold down the command key, probably control key on a Windows, but command key on a Mac and click backslash and it comments out that line, all right? This is true for any code. So let's say if I made a let num equal six, all right, and save that and then said num now, let's change it to seven but let's say, ah, I wanna leave it at six. I can keep the cursor on this line and hold down command backslash and comment out that line of code. All right, so you can comment out 
lines of code. So I can comment out the red and save this and notice it goes back to the default black. And also notice the syntax of CSS, right, for comments. So even if I want to say this is the heading CSS, right, command backslash, and it puts the proper comment syntax around it. And lastly, we can do this for HTML as well. And say this is HTML comment syntax, all right. Command backslash, and you can see the crazy arrow, which I would I never can remember. So it's really nice to have that available. Um, the last thing, I, a couple things I'll show you um, before I go is it's sometimes nice to be able to uh, collapse blocks of code. Let's say we were making a lot of these cards. I could collapse line 32 and collapse line 26 and it's going to collapse all the collapse into it all the children elements see all these children elements that did with the card media the text the h2 they're all collapsed within the card right and it also becomes easy to duplicate cards so we can copy one and now we have a third card even though there's again there's no media but you can see how these are useful and it just skips the lines and collapses them and it becomes easier to read code same thing with these paragraphs maybe or um, you can go crazy and collapse the entire body and the head. All right, so you can see the core structure of a document. And the same goes for um, HTML and CSS, right? You can collapse the, the declaration block um, attached to the selector, okay? So with all that, um, we'll give a couple last things. It's good to note um, that we have what's called the command palette. And the command palette, you're not going to be using a lot, but if you bring it up, I'm going to show you a nice little thing to do. Let's say we needed to wrap all these cards, these three cards that we've created here with a section element. We were going to put this in this particular section of media, uh, wrap this, and we need to put section around this. And it's a lot easier to, we can just select it all and we can go to the command palette and you can see that's command shift P and I can start typing wrap or typing any command and it will make a recommendation and it's recommending Emmet wrap with abbreviation and I can click on it or again, remember just slip enter and I can start, start typing the Emmet keyboard shortcut section for the section element. And you can see it's completing that section element as I type it and wrapping the opening and closing tags right around it. All right, and somehow there was an extra, whoops, I guess I didn't confirm that. Let's, let's do that one more time. Let's collapse these so it's easier to see. All right, let's select them. And I'm going to do Command Shift P, type uh, wrap, and type section. All right, and hit return. And now you can see the section element is wrapped around it. Um, and lastly, here are uh, settings. Okay, settings. You can now start to search for them, and we're going to go over these within the extensions tutorial. But you could start looking for, like, say, font, right? And we could pick a font family uh, from our uh, desktop that we've installed. And Victor Mono is a font that I've installed and that I basically added here. I can change the font size, and it starts recommending different settings that you can choose for Visual Studio Code. But we'll go into that much more deeply in the next tutorial. Hope you found this useful and I'll see you soon.